Labor will go to the next federal election supporting asylum seeker boat turnbacks and an emissions trading scheme as it seeks to neutralise issues that damaged it in government. Despite strong opposition from the party's left-wing faction, the vote to support turnbacks passed by a show of hands at the ALP National Conference. After two days of behind-the-scenes negotiating, number crunching and at times emotional argument, it was time to debate the asylum seeker policy on the conference floor. Victorian MP Andrew Giles moved the motion to rule out boat turnbacks, but before he could get started, protesters took to the stage. No, no, no. They were eventually removed by security, but set the scene for a passionate debate. The Labor Party, unlike other parties, conducts our debates in the public eye. Four from the left argued the case against turnbacks. I regard them as inherently unsafe. Four from the right argued in favour. You can forget about any future Labor government being remembered for anything else. We will simply be condemned by history. Tony Burke acknowledged 33 people died at sea during his four months as Immigration Minister, including a 10-week-old baby. The number assigned to my time as Immigration Minister is 33. I was there for fewer than four months and there are 33 lives that were lost on my watch. Bill Shorten spoke last, telling the rank and file Labor had to endorse turnbacks to prevent any more deaths at sea. I thought, is there a way, is there an easy way? Is there a way I could not have to give this speech, that we have to have this degree of debate? But I would not be the leader I seek to be of this nation if I ignored my own personal conviction and conscience on this matter. Then it was time for the first actual vote of this conference. President Mark Butler declared the motion against turnbacks lost on the voices. A show of hands confirmed a comfortable win for the, comfortable win for the least. The amendment is clearly lost. Anthony Albanese was amongst those who voted against turnbacks. Tanya Plibersek and Penny Wong didn't show up themselves, sending proxies to vote on their behalf, also against turnbacks. So Labor was split at the highest level on this. The conference vote, however, was a clear and much needed win for Bill Shorten. The Liberals have seized on the division. They say Labor can't be trusted to actually carry out both turnbacks. But Bill Shorten has made it very clear to everyone now where he stands on the issue and his willingness to take on his own party over a difficult issue. Both turnbacks are now bipartisan. David Spears, Sky News, Melbourne. A small fishing community on Tasmania's east coast is still reeling following a fatal shark attack. A 46-year-old man was diving for scallops with his adult daughter off Mariah Island when the terror unfolded. Tasmania's idyllic east coast, the scene of a once in two decades shark attack. A Hobart woman watching on as her father was mauled by what's believed to be a large white pointer. She saw a very large shark and she saw her father being attacked by the shark. The father-daughter duo had been diving for scallops off Tasmania's Mariah Island. The daughter, aged in her 20s, witnessing the attack, racing to the surface to raise the alarm before firing a flare from their five-metre dinghy. But by the time help arrived, it was too late. This is not an area which is known for sharks, but just yesterday fishermen say they saw a 15-foot white pointer off the coast, one diver having a lucky escape. When I got hit from behind and rolled over and when my head went under I actually seen the shark. Questions are now being raised as to why no shark warnings had been issued after a number of sightings in the area in recent days. Uh, my understanding is that the uh local police officer wasn't aware of any warning that went out yesterday. Police are warning people police are warning out of the water. With the community reeling from the news, it's unlikely many will return anytime soon. Elizabeth Bryan, Sky News, Hobart. Surfer Mick Fanning has returned to the water for the first time since surviving a shark attack in South Africa. Fanning went for a surf near his Tweed Heads home this morning, posting this picture on social media network Instagram. Fanning says it feels good to be back in the water. It's been five days since he fought off a shark while competing in the final of the World Tour surfing event at Jeffreys Bay. 
A nurse who was accused of fighting alongside Islamic State in Syria has been extradited to Melbourne. The father of five is expected to be charged with serious terrorism offences. Adam Brookman, home from a lawless land, only to go straight into the arms of the Australian law. Flanked by federal police, head down, face hidden by a grey hooded jumper and hands cuffed. He's escorted from a police paddy wagon into the Sydney domestic terminal. Earlier, the 39-year-old faced Parramatta local court, accused of knowingly providing support to a terrorist organisation. Court documents detail the Melbourne man provided guard and reconnaissance duties for Islamic State to help the group perform a terrorist act. Allegations which the medic says are false. In early 2014, Brookman travelled to Syria, heading north from the capital Damascus to the city of Aleppo. It's there he claims he worked as a nurse providing humanitarian aid. By June, heavy fighting forced him to head west, where he was injured in a bombing and later treated in an Islamic State-run hospital. It's here he allegedly worked alongside the terrorist organisation, but by late December, he'd plotted an escape across the Turkish border, where he contacted federal police. His family at home in Melbourne's northern suburbs held grave concerns for his safety. You know, Adam, you could possibly tell us who he is as a man. Despite returning home of his own accord, on Facebook, the Muslim convert posted photos of men eating with rifles stacked between them and a kitten playing with a handgun. Adam Brookman appeared via video link from here at the Sydney Police Centre. His beard had been trimmed and he appeared to have lost weight. The father of five said nothing as the magistrate deemed him a danger to the public and if released from custody, likely to commit a serious offence. The first Australian to return home from Islamic State, he now has to prove he didn't fight with ISIS. A young mother accused of murdering her six-week-old baby will remain behind bars after her matter was mentioned briefly in court this morning. The 26-year-old was arrested yesterday after the infant was found with her throat cut at a home north of Sydney. The woman did not apply for bail and the matter has been adjourned until Wednesday. She was also expected to undergo a mental health assessment. An off-duty police officer has arrested an alleged carjacker who crashed a stolen vehicle into the Gold Coast Airport terminal. The 34-year-old driver has allegedly stolen the vehicle at knife point just moments earlier. Daniel Cassidy collared by police after a 30-minute rampage that somehow didn't claim lives. People jumping, running, screaming, everything was chaos. The chaos culminated with the 34-year-old ploughing a stolen car for 100 metres along the packed footpath of the Gold Coast Airport. We walk in and out of that doorway like you know, 20 times a day and any one of us could have been walking out. Eventually stuck on a guardrail, an off-duty police officer and a security guard dragged him out, discovering a concealed knife. There was quite a few members of the public um, at the, um, on the footpath at the time and I do understand a number had to jump out of the way, um, but again, no one was injured. Police say it's the same knife used at the Burley Golf Course to carjack the vehicle at 11.30. Over the next half an hour, police received numerous reports of erratic driving in the area before the suspect eventually arrived at the airport. There, he attempted to steal another ride at the Europe Car office. That male produced a golf club and a knife and demanded keys and phones from staff members there. They refused to comply and he um, decamped the scene in that vehicle again. Moments later, in front of shocked travellers, the wild ride came to a dramatic end. Yeah, I was just parking a car in the car park and just seeing the car just driving up the footpath and people everywhere. And police say a driver who died after his car slammed into a truck in Melbourne may have run a red light. They've issued a warning to motorists to adhere to the rules after the 142nd death on Victorian roads this year. The aftermath of a deadly crash that's left a family grieving. I just came running out and I could see fumes coming out of the car. There was a lot of white smoke everywhere and that's what I was more concerned about was yeah, it catching on fire. Just before 9 o'clock this morning, this Nissan was travelling along Marnie's Road in Thomastown when it crashed into a truck. There's another lady screaming like she was in shock as well. 
It's pretty awful. The male driver of the car was trapped and had to be freed by fire crews. And unfortunately, despite the best efforts of ambulance paramedics, he did die at the scene. With toys thrown from the car, onlookers initially feared children may have been involved. And there was a kid's uh, a seat which was lying out and she got terrified because she thought there were kids in them. Police confirmed the victim was the sole occupant of the car. Their investigation will examine whether the car's driver had run a red light. Police are now appealing for witnesses. They say there were several vehicles in front of the truck as the crash took place. They'd also like to speak with anybody who was using this intersection here on Marnie's Road at around 20 to 9 this morning. And it's a reminder of the dangers on our road and really urge people to take care on our roads. Barack Obama has addressed a group of African business leaders in Kenya's capital as he begins his tour of the country. The US president's also held a dinner with family members at a hotel in Nairobi. He'll spend two days in the city before travelling to Ethiopia, the seat of the African Union. This is his first presidential visit to his father's birthplace. He's in the country to discuss trade, investment and counter-terrorism. There's a reason why my name is Barack Hussein Obama. My father came from these parts. I have family and relatives here. And in my visits over the years, walking the streets of Nairobi, I've come to know the warmth and the spirit of the Kenyan people.